from the magic rainbow bag. Love lives here, so join us today for Eve's Barnside Chat. You can find us in Campbellville, Ontario. We have rescued chickens, pigs, and cows and goats. We've got plenty more farmed animals. Big and small, all for love and love for all. Welcome to Eve's Barnside Chat. We take your questions from the magic rainbow bag. Love lives here, so join us today for Eve's Barnside Chat. Is to inspire kindness and compassion for farmed animals everywhere. You can help us take action by volunteering or through donations. Or visit our store and check out our website to learn more. Welcome to Eve's Barnside Chat. We take your questions. From the magic rainbow bag, love lives here, so join us today for Eve's Barnside Chat. Happily ever Esther Farm Sanctuary. Hello. Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of Heaps Fun. Coming at you live from the happiest place on in the planet. Uh, on the planet. Uh, this is my in partner. The yeah, in the <laughs> ah, it's hot. Uh, this is my partner, Crime Steve Jenkins, and my name's Derek Walter, and we are, are the founders of Heaps. If you are new to the page and joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a safe space for questions. And uh, if you have a question, you can put it in the comment feed below and we will answer it. There's a little tiny printer inside this bag that's connected to the Wi-Fi. And every time you write a question, it shows up inside this bag. Magic. Well, uh, yeah, by magic, of course. There are a lot of questions in there, so you going to screen them all ahead of time. Uh, but before we get to some questions, I just want to cover... A couple of things that have happened around the farm this week. Uh, number one, one thing that uh, somebody that I could not get off of my mind uh, was Nancy Chicken. And Nancy Chicken had a, a bout of skin cancer about the size of my hand removed from his underside. And um, pretty crazy when you think of how small Nancy is. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. Nancy. Um, you know, Nancy's life was in grave danger, of course, and uh, happy to report that uh, the margins were successful around that cancer spot that they carved out, and therefore Nancy does not need radiation, which, of course, is good for Nancy. Yes. Um, that whole treatment was around $15,000. Anything to do with chickens and or rabbits, anything micro, microsurgery means macro bills and <laughs> macro invoices but nothing but the best for nancy we have got the OBC world's specialty. best individualized care program here for farmed animals and nancy is a cancer survivor of happily ever after farm sanctuary so a huge Yay. round of applause for nancy we can a little better um yeah and nancy is definitely a cherished friend around the farm to many caregivers and um, we are happy that uh, Nancy will have some more time on this planet. So, yay for Nancy. Nancy. All right, from our magic question, uh, magic rainbow bag. Maggie wants to know, have you ever considered having cameras hooked up to the EarthCam network? Oh, I'm gonna Google what the EarthCam network is. <laughs> what, what, do you know what the, the EarthCam network is? I do not, I'm assuming it's a network of of um, places that have to do with the environment or climate or or animals, perhaps, that people can log in and look at various locations around the world. It's the leading network of live streaming webcams for tourism and entertainment. There we go. Ah, so there we are. Kinda. Uh, so we have not really explored that method. 
Um, could be interesting. It could be interesting. We could have um, live cams available during, you know, special times or special periods. But um, from folks that I have spoke to that have live cams at their farm sanctuaries, um, they heed a lot of calls and concerns for regular everyday animal activity. So uh, the pigs might get into a little fight and then the email lines would light up and the telephone calls would come in to let us know that the pigs are fighting. Um, or perhaps injuries that are already known about are being reported on hundreds of times. Um, so it can be a hindrance um, as well as it can be entertainment. Um, but at this point, we have uh, made the decision that we will not have live cams 24-7 around the property. Uh, nor could we have that streaming capability to do that. Uh, we would have to do an enormous upgrade to the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're happy where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, there's around 50 cameras and they all go to my phone um, and or anybody else's phone, uh, whoever's in charge for that day. And um, yeah, it's an amazing system that's gone up, but it's just live for the caregivers. Yes. Good question. Uh, Joe Marie wants to know, does Esther approve of your outfits for live video? I don't know. Uh, she doesn't seem to be putting up a fuss right now. Avoiding eye contact. She is avoiding eye contact. But <laughs> we do have somebody that always joins us when we Very are here. And he's always right here. My big man, what are you doing? Yeah, he says, man. well, I'm always here. I love to be on the Barnside chat. <laughs> Remember, folks, if you have a question, you can put it in the comment feed below. And one of our kind admin volunteers that helps keep this a safe space um, if it's an appropriate question, they will hit print, and it will print into Stephen's <laughs> bag here. Okay, no name on this question. Do you have another large barn, like the one in the background? Uh, nope, that is the largest Just the barn. large barn. Yep, that is the main barn. So, nope, that is it. We do it's... have one, two, three, four barns. What? One, two, three, four, five barns, actually, and one yeah. more going up. Yeah. So the yeah, so they're much smaller. How big are those barns? Twenty by thirty. Well, uh, yeah, and the the other one's thirty by forty or something, isn't it? The cow barn's quite large. Uh, good question. I'll have to look that. They're up. good sized barns. The but barn yeah, we have built some new animal shelters that are very large and very lovely. The barn behind us is eighty by forty, roughly. Uh, that barn plus so. the hayloft. Plus and all the that hayloft. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Kim Walling wants to know: Will you be doing tours this summer? Um, so all sources. Get ready to boo, everybody. I know. Boo! <laughs> I'm not going to answer that one. You can read between the lines on that one. At the moment, we're not sure, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, at the moment, we're not too sure. Our, COVID first, restrictions. our first important, um, you know, the thing of most importance is keeping the caregivers and maintenance uh, personnel all in tip-top health. Uh, we have such a, a lean a lean staff that um, even just one or two people getting sick uh, can really mean a big disruption. So we are not having um, tours at this point, but you know they might come out with a magic pill and they might send everybody the magic pill and the mail and we all take that magic pill and we'll all be healed. So uh, we'll see what's happening. Um, Ways to help out Heath, so you can become a monthly donor. You can donate one time, and you can go to happydayofresser.ca, or you can donate to the Amazon wish list. There are a number of consumable items on the Amazon wish list, uh, which you can partake in. Piggy fight, that's okay. Yeah, there's a big piggy fight. That was a longer one. It was a little bit of a longer one. Um, the thing with pig fights is usually they're silent. Um, pig... Those, Those are the bad ones. Are the bad ones? The silent fights are the bad ones. And the ones where they're screaming is usually when they're running to get away from each other. Um, so I think that was just a screaming <laughs> to run and get away. Yeah. Um, Hazel wants to know, is Esther Shares the same as Bear Care? That's a great question. Ah, uh, no, it is not the same as Bear Care. Oh, they're Bear, all great questions, but um, that's really Bear, good. Bear Care um, is the individualized care program that we have here at the farm for all of our residents. And Esther Shares is a program that is out there to help support other farmed animal sanctuaries and their unexpected medical costs that mm. could arise. Steve's going to tell you a little bit about the Esther Shares program and why it exists. Yeah, the Esther Shares program came about when we were doing the um, uh, CT scanner project when Esther was sick. 
Um, and a whole number of things became very, very obvious to us during that one last and other, or first and foremost being the uh, unexpected cost and how ridiculously expensive it can be when you have uh, a resident uh, get sick and you don't know what you're dealing with. It can be crippling at times. And, and thankfully, we had some extra funds from that campaign. Um, and we took all of those funds. Every dollar of it went into a separate account uh, that we called Esther Shares. That's what helped us develop the Esther Shares program. And, and like Derek said, all of those funds are used to help other sanctuaries. That money is not used by any residents of Heaths um, or Esther, um, but used to help other sanctuaries when they have similar situations and unexpected medical bills come up that, um, like we said, could be very problematic uh, if you're not prepared for it. Or, or sometimes you've just had a resident come back from the hospital and somebody else gets sick and you know, it can be a real, it can be a real issue and there's nothing cheap about vet bills, especially if it's a chicken, as <laughs> we discussed earlier. So really cool program. Um, we've been able to help a whole lot of uh, sanctuaries and animals with that program. We love it very, very much. I'm super proud of that. The Esther Shares program, you can find all about it by heading over to happilyeverester.ca. Click on Esther Shares and then that will open up a page and that can, uh, you can fill out your information if you Very run nice. a farmed animal sanctuary. It tells you about everything it needs, uh, all how it works, um, how you can register your sanctuary, um, what to do to get approval. Uh, so there's three easy ways. Uh, there's three steps, sorry, three easy steps. Number one is sending in your funding request. Number two is processing your request. And then number three is, of course, receiving payout for Good your deal. request. Um, and there are some stipulations um, and rules you have to um, follow um, in order to get reimbursement. Um, and then step number four is staying in touch. We love to hear about how that specific resident is faring out. Um, here are some sanctuaries that we were able to help last year. You did. Of course I did. Frig. Oh no! How long have we been talking? So oh brutal. Oh my god. So brutal. We just need somebody here. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh, have yeah. a great Monday. Yeah, thank you so much. What is wrong with me? Oh my god. COVID brain. Um, so, so we'll go back to Ian's question. He wants to know: Did Steve catch COVID to avoid the dunk tank? Yes, he did. Yes, yes. he absolutely caught COVID to avoid the dunk tank. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Doof. I know. I I'm gonna have to give you that responsibility because oh, there, my I me. just can't. It's so friggin' funny. What's really funny, folks, is there's a big blue button 
right above our faces right now with a big X through it when yeah. it's muted. And for some reason, neither of us ever seem to notice. And we just, yep, 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 oh, yep with a big X above our heads. So brutal. So brutal. Dummies. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, the anyway. running, it's the running gag. That's how we get comments. On we uh, here. we <laughs> sadly did need to delay the dunk tank, as all of you know, but it will be rescheduled very, very soon. In the next couple of weeks, I believe, right? We have to do it before things warm up, obviously, or it kind of defeats what we promise that we would do for y'all so so yeah that'll be happening in the next couple of weeks hopefully Derek will be able to get that nailed down and we'll be able to provide you all with a rescheduled day of torture and agony for me mm. and Derek so <laughs> that'd be a good day to mute the microphone so you don't hear our cries Honestly. and our I think there's going to be a lot of there profanity can be no language guarantees on that day. Um, Liz Zoe wants to know do turkeys rest their neck when sleeping or do they sleep holding it up I guess that would be for any long necked bird no, they tuck it in, actually. It's really, really cute. Cornelius folds his head back, and he, like, tucks it under his wing. So all you see is the back of his little head there. So he covers himself up and covers his eyes, and it's really, really cute, actually. Um, yeah, I'll try to get a photo of that and, uh, and show you, because it's pretty adorable. So, yeah, he tucks his head right back in. You can barely see it. Um, Carolyn Ford wants to know, on a vegan diet, do you have to take any extra supplements, like vitamins, and the rest of it is cut off? So I'm assuming it's vitamins protein, minerals, all that sort of stuff. So no, Carolyn, on a properly balanced vegan diet, um, you do not need to take um, vitamins and supplements, just like any any diet, really. I mean, B12. You need to watch B12. Yeah, you got to watch B12. it's always good to get your blood work run. We're not doctors. No. So make sure you consult your Lots of B12 and Red Bull, just saying. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, no, there are, there are definitely, um, things you need to watch and be aware of, but it's, it's same for, uh, any diet or any lifestyle. You just need to be eating lots of fresh whole foods. Um, lots of color. Apparently the more color you can have on your plate, the better you are, right? Varying vegetables and fruits and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, properly managed, uh, you can do really, really well. I don't think I've taken a supplement in other than my Red Bulls, which give me my B12. <laughs> um, I've never taken supplements. So you take a couple, I think, right? You take a couple extra little things. Yep. Yep. I um, definitely do. So, you know, everybody's a little bit different, but I take magnesium. This happens thanks to Red Bull. Zinc and, uh, B12. So yeah. that's the three things that showed up on my blood work as needing just to make sure that I keep that in check. Yeah. I find potassium hard to get. You got to eat a whole lot of bananas. Potassium is one that I struggle with. Look at this. Cap uh, Sir Denver is sleeping in his new barn. Check it out. He is captain of that space for sure. We're so happy to see him sleeping there finally. Um, I have not seen Pouty in that barn yet. Um, Pouty's still sleeping outside, I believe. Um, but that new barn is a big, huge, beautiful space, and hopefully Pouty will feel safe enough to come inside. Check these photos out, too. Check out how big <coughs> Sammy is up against one of April's babies. Um, they are the same size. <laughs> this is Abigail and Sammy. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and they're getting ready to be integrated soon. So hopefully in the spring, once things kind of soften up and the grounds get a little bit back to normal, we're going to make one giant big pig herd. Um, I'm sure there will be many social groups within the pig herd, but it's going to be nice to have them all integrated together. That's going to be super sweet. The pigs were side by side because they were up for their uh, monthly health care checks where they get weighed. So they come to the barn, they get weighed, they get looked at from all angles, and then their um, resident profiles get updated with that, uh, with all that information. Here's Bobby Girl out doing some snow angels. We had a whole bunch of snow at the sanctuary um, and uh, lots of cleanup uh, surrounding that snow. And there is another snowstorm coming this week with mm -hmm. about... Uh, about this much snow. More snow than we want. More snow than we want. Last question. Uh, last question. I still have many questions. Um, we'll go with this one, though, because it works well. If your tractor is broken down, how do you get farm chores done that need the tractor? Oh. We don't let Derek touch it, for yeah, one. Yeah, number one, I'm not uh, allowed keys to the tractor. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you see that pylon I sucked up the other day when I was using? Oh my God. The pylon I backed in too close with the auger, and the pylon, like one of the big ones, too, oh, just went yeah. and sucked, uh, sucked out and shredded into like a million pieces. Oh, goodness me. Um, so... Uh, we can't do anything without the... So there are chores that we have to mm -hmm. either wait on. Not too many, thankfully, but there are definitely no, a few. feeding out of the cows is one of the ones, uh, one of the things that we can't do um, with small the big rounds. So, yeah, yeah, we just use the small bales instead. But if we get a snowstorm, we're up the creek, no paddle. We have to end up calling somebody in. Now, thankfully, knock wood, 
that hasn't happened this year. Is the tractor back yet? The tractor de never left. They were able to fix it Sweet. on site, thankfully. Yep. So we'll be okay with this next storm. If you have a question that you'd like to put in the magic rainbow bag for us next week, all you have to do is put it in the comment. Am I going to rapid fire below. a couple of these? No, that is all the time oh, that I have we to have save these for, for today. Next week. There's some really good ones. Too. I have a video clip to show you. Um, about removing some snow and... Uh, and pylons. And pylons. So, <laughs> friends, my name's Derek. My name is Steve. Have a wonderful Thank day, Thank you so everybody. much for tuning in. Keep your eyes peeled for the Esther Shares campaign. We really need your love and support so we can keep that going. See you next week. See you later. Bye-bye. I'm here with the big green tractor, and we're going to go plow some snow. We got a record-breaking amount of snow in the past couple days, and I need to make sure that the north service road is passable for emergency. So I'm sitting on the 2120, it's a John Deere uh, built in the 70s and it has a big huge eight foot snow blower on the back and above me, well, uh, it's just the sky. Uh, there's no cab on this tractor. So uh, I've got all the protective gear to keep snow off my face because uh, the snow is for sure um, gonna be blowing a bit. Well, the tractor does not want to start right now. Uh, I think it's a bit too cold, so we'll give the coil heater a bit more time and we'll try it in about 20 minutes or so. So, the tractor doesn't want to start right now, so uh, there's still lots of digging out to do. So I've got some shovels and I'm gonna head out. This is the north road here you can see the pylons and you can see where somebody has trekked out there once or twice already um, and this is the road that needs to be cleared of course I'm not going to shovel it I'm going to shovel the gates uh, there are there are two gates um, that need to be shoveled out they uh, the snowplow can't get close to them and so I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and check on the tractor and hopefully the battery on the tractor is charged and Hopefully the tractor is warm enough to start. So uh, kind of a comedy of errors here, but that's what you get. Snowshoes would make this truck a whole lot easier. Steven and I do have snowshoes. But, I figured that wearing snowshoes while shoveling the gates would be cumbersome. Hello, Crow. I notice the Crow family that lives here a lot. There are seven of them. And they often greet me when I'm in the hot tub and hang out in the goat pasture. Seems like they're always trying to get my attention. Here's where a little critter got that far and then some hard-ass work. I am winded. That is one heck of a hard walk. 
I definitely should have wore snowshoes. Uh, but now that we're here, I can dig out this gate so that the snow plow can come through easily. Um, the reason I got to dig it out is because there's just too much snow. And if we pull too hard on the gates and reef on them, and we keep doing that over time, uh, these gates won't last long. So uh, it's important to dig them out and do what needs to be done right. And uh, that way that will last a long time. All right, I think that's dug out far enough so that the tractor with the snowblower can get up nice and close without being too close to the gates. Um, and then that way that will allow us to open them. There's a ton of snow and uh, there are over, oh, probably 30 gates that need to be dug out. So it's going to be a long day for the staff and for the volunteers. And hopefully I'll get this driveway dug out tonight. Whenever it snows this much, it is so important to clear all of the access gates for emergency. The last thing that you want to be doing in an emergency is digging out gates and digging out trailers and digging out trucks. And so there's a lot of snow that fell. This is quite an accumulation. In places there's about 16 inches of snow and uh, we haven't had this much snow since we've moved here, all at one time that is. I know quite a few people didn't make it into their shifts because they just couldn't get out, you know, in the suburbs, or not suburbs, in the subdivisions and in the city, there's just no place to put the snow. So your neighbors piling their snow on top of your snow and before you know it, you can't see over the car and there's just no way that anybody can get in safely. So on snow days, we are so grateful to have a caregiver that lives right on the property and that can jump in at a moment's notice to make sure that the residents don't even recognize that something is missing. Well, I forgot to film the triumphant turnover. Started. So that means we're gonna have a fun afternoon. Here we go. All it needed was a little battery charge and uh, warming up the engine coil. So just plug that in for about half an hour and now we're ready to rip. Okay, I got my goggles, I got my hat, I got my gloves. I got my tracker. I got my eight foot reverse PTO snowblower. <laughs> Let's go see if I can help out anywhere.
Well, I made it back, uh, but I didn't get to plow everything that I wanted to plow, uh, or snow blow, that is. Unfortunately, the PTO switch uh, that turns on the turns on the wheelie bits here at the back. Uh, unfortunately, it stopped. Uh, the switch stopped working. Um, so. That's it for me for today. I do not know how to fix that, and uh, we'll leave that for the professionals. I don't know what we would do without this tractor. It does seem like a bit of a relic, but uh, there's just no way that we could do what we do without this piece of equipment. Uh, we have over you know, 3,500 feet of driveway to clear, and about the same in pathways and it feels like a million gates and uh, we just could not do this without this old girl. Uh, I've got some news for Kevin. I'm gonna write him a note and let him know that the tractor started broken and we are ending broken. So hopefully there's no more big snow dumpings before we can get the tractor fixed and return back in working order. Thank you so much to the monthly donors who help us with the ongoing expenses of this place. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. And today it was 16 inches of snow. See you next time. All we need is a place to be and a few good friends for some company. If you'd like to stay, you don't have to leave. We'll leave the lights on and the door unlocked. If you drop on by, you don't have to knock. We're happy to share whatever we've got.